What's happening everybody? The Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today's video is about the HP Omen 45L. Now, if you missed my previous video about it, it was a very deep dive going over a lot of things that they improved upon from last year's model, which was the 30L. That was their top end model. Now the 45L is here in an improved on a lot of different things. So check that video out. Today's video simply is thermal paste. How well did HP Omen do with their thermal paste? I have a lot of this Arctic MX4 laying around. So I was like, you know what, since this is popular, a lot of people use it. Let me see if this will lower the temperatures for the 12900K processor that's here. In my previous video, little spoiler, this machine performed spectacularly in gaming, Star Citizen, uh, link in the bio and all that stuff in comments to join me in game with the referral code, all that good stuff. Um, but when it came to like uh, Cinebench R23, it, it got a little toasty. So let's go over this one more time. I'm going to run Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes to get a full soak with this cryo chamber that they have here. This is a 240 millimeter AIO that is cooling a 12900K. This was a kind of a pre-release, almost an engineering sample that they sent me ahead of time. Uh, the full release ones give you the option for a full 360 millimeter AIO as well. But nonetheless, will Arctic MX4 or basically any other third party thermal paste drop the temperatures? If I have time, I may test a few others. There's Kingpin KPX, there's Thermal Grizzly. This one was just in my drawer right here. So that's what we're going with. So let's run Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes, see what the temperatures are. Then I'm gonna take this apart. It's very easy, I'm gonna show you because basically it's a push button here, push button here in the back and that's one thing that HP Omen did very well. It's easy to modify this system, which is great. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Let's load up Cinebench R23 and see how this goes. All right, now we're just going to put the side panel back on for a realistic test, simple as that. Windows 11 is completely updated. As you see, we have the 12900K processor. This does have 64 gigs of RAM, uh, two hard drives, or sorry, uh, SSD drives actually, and then the 3090. And I'm using Hardware Info 64. It's the latest version as of today, version 7.22-4731. The Core Max and CPU package is basically what I'm gonna be monitoring here, as well as if there's any thermal throttling here as well. Cinebench R23 is set to a minimum test duration of 10 minutes. So let's start the multi-core and see how this goes. And you'll see that all the cores and well, they're cores and e-cores technically, yes, but uh, all of them are gonna be at 100% load now. And immediately you see the CPU package hit 96, 97 degrees with immediate thermal throttling right now. And we're, <laughs> Uh, only a few seconds in. So we're gonna see how this does, give us a score, and maybe even with the thermal paste of uh, the Arctic MX4 application, we still hit thermal throttling, but maybe the score is better. And after about 30 seconds in, you could hear the fans start to ramp up a little bit. It's not loud at all, um, so maybe that shows that the fan curve could be adjusted a bit more to improve its cooling capacity. Cinebench R23 finished its 10 minute run and we do have some thermal issues. So five of the P cores here as shown in Hardware Info 64 did thermally throttle and we hit 99 degrees on the CPU package and 98 degrees on Core Max. So definitely some room for improvement. We did hit a score of 21,357 on Cinebench R23. So remember that. So we're gonna see if even though we may thermally throttle with the MX4 here, is the Cinebench R23 score any better, right? Or are some of the P cores no longer going to thermally throttle? So there's a couple of different things. So basically, HP Omen makes it easy to take this off to service and let's get to it.
All right, let's see if this turns on and boots up. That's a good sign. And there we go, that was quick. So the results are in. After 10 minutes of Cinebench R23 running with the Arctic MX4 thermal paste, we have some interesting numbers. Not all that interesting, actually. We dropped one degree Celsius, so statistically that's meaningless. So we maxed that at 98 degrees. Some of the peak cores did thermally throttle, and we did go up about 100 points on Cinebench R23 to 21,458, I believe it was. Yes, it is. So again, statistically meaningless when it comes to when you're at 21,000s, 300s and stuff. So what that means is one, we should do more testing. We could do that. Two, HP Omen actually used some decent thermal paste and it was applied correctly. So even though I like hand applied it and used the actual spatula to make sure every area was covered on the 12900K, that the results were basically the same. Uh, the noise levels were definitely in check with this cryo chamber. And because the heat is all coming out like this and it's bringing in cold air, well, this is LA, but cold air from the room into here and then blowing up through the AIO, which is then cooling the 12900K, it keeps, helps to keep the, the GPU nice and cool and vice versa. So all the hot air that that GPU will be producing when you're gaming or video editing, uh, it's not affecting the 12900K either. So it's an elegant solution. Definitely love it. I've done this in a couple of different builds of mine as well, uh, like test, test bench builds that keep the heat separate. So you really understand like uh, what parts are generating heat, which parts definitely are thermally throttling on their own, independent of each other. So overall, good job, HP Omen. Uh, and with that, I'll call it done. Uh, so hit that like button if you liked it, sub if you loved it. I sound like Dave 2D now, but hey, whatever. That sounds good. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.